So I'm just going to do a video here about how to update the firmware in your RTD board to the um, Open RTD firmware, which you need to enable the I squared C control, which lets the Arduino change the the video inputs um, when you press the the various buttons on the head unit. So this is a board that's been sent to me for for an upgrade. It's actually got the I squared C connections already been made, ready to connect into the Arduino. Um, but what I'll do first of all is I'll just show you what it's like with the with, uh, with the standard firmware, just so you can see the difference between that and the RTD one. Um, one thing you do have to make sure is that your open RTD firmware image exactly matches the model and resolution of your screen. So these boards have got LVDS and TTL connections. Um, the screen that I'm using the screen and the firmware I'm going to load is for an 800 by 480 resolution TTL screen. Uh, that's the one I use in my own unit. Um, so uh, there's a couple of different types of connection actually on these boards depending on the variant you get. With this, with this one, there's two tabs, one on either side, which you have to pull out and then you have to push the uh, ribbon cable into the connector all the way in and then push the two tabs down which lock it into place. So you just make sure they're firmly in. Um, this is a different variant of the board I've got here which is actually um, got a little hinge here so you hinge up the um, the little flap there push the ribbon cable and push it down clamps down same thing different uh, slightly different connection method so now that that's hooked in that's just for the resistive touch overlay which we can ignore for now I've got my bench power supply ready set to 12 volts um, I think these boards take between something like 5 and 15 volts but I will run it off 12 volts which is what it will run off when it's in the head unit um, so that's connected uh, just switch on the power and you should be able to see come straight up with the blue screen and the HDMI symbol there um, which is a, a sign that it's the, got the original firmware so there's no signal and then it um, helpfully powers itself off so uh, that's with the original firmware so I'll just switch the power off to there to load in the new firmware what you need first of all is a cable so this is a homemade jobby um, I'll post a link in the description as to how you can build this, but it's really simple. Uh, you basically need an Adafruit FT232H board, uh, which has got a USB socket which goes into your computer, and then it turns it into a um, firmware update tool here, just with the aid of two uh, pull-up resistors and a 15-pin D connector, same as a VGA connection. Um, so it actually uses I2C through two pins in the VGA, which is on a separate bus to these I2C connections, uh, to download the firmware binary image uh, onto the board. So what you need to do is connect up the USB using a micro USB connection here into the Adafruit board. The 15 pin D connection goes into the board there. And then on the other side, you need to plug your USB into your computer. So as if by magic my laptop's appeared. You'll see on the um, on the Adafruit board here, the green LED lights up just to show that you've got power from the USB of the, of the laptop. Um, plus you also need to make sure that you've got the RTD board powered up, otherwise it won't receive the firmware. Now, to put the firmware on, you need a, a piece of software called Rover Tool. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, it's a free tool that basically will download a, a binary firmware file onto the flash on the RTD board. So I've loaded it up here, and all being well, you should see, if you load it up once you've plugged your, um, your board in, it says using FTDI USB programmer FT232H. Uh, so that's a good sign. If you don't see that, you may have to go into the tools here, and the settings, uh, which I'll just move down here for you. Um, and you need to make sure it's on the USB generic FTDI device here. Um, so all being well, you can open bank zero, which basically means select the, the firmware uh, binary file. So I'm using version 546, which I know is the version that works with the 800 by 480 screen. Um, so if I load that, it's as simple as pressing program target so you'll see here detecting the memory device and, and writing all the blocks so that's a good sign if you see that progress um, at this point you need to just hope that we don't get any sort of power cut because you could end up bricking the device but uh, hey it's all part of the fun uh, of this project um, it only takes a minute or so to write all the data through so it's, it's a fairly quick process
So there we go, info success, so that's always a good sign. So I like to power off the RTD board at this point and disconnect the programmer. Can now lose the laptop, don't need that for a while. And then if I bring this back over here, if I power up the, the board now, I should hopefully see yeah, no blue screen and the on-screen display is, is um, different to before. So we know that that's uh, programmed successfully with the new firmware. If I plug in the button board here, I can call it the menu. There we go. So you can see it's the OpenRTD firmware version 0546. So that's exactly what we've programmed. Um, so that's it. Simple as that.